Ayo, ruler of nerds here, and we're going to hop into friend sim. Last time we were here, we were befriending Skyla, I think. So we're just going to hop right back in. Putting one foot in front of the other, you continue on through this strange alien world. Just when you think stuff is beginning to make sense, it all slips through your fingers and becomes even stranger and more alien. There does, however, seem to be one thing that remains constant through all place planets and walks of life. That thing is friendship. You are on the prowl for more. It would have perhaps been wise to stay with one of your wonderful new friends until you are fully healed. But as Martha Stewart said, visitors, like fish, begin to smell after three days. You were almost positive Martha Stewart said that. Almost. Nevertheless, you soldier on in your endless quest for companionship. Where will your travels take you next? Bronya Yursama. Let's go. You've been traveling through a cave network for a while now. The rigid stone is a welcome respite from the eerily organic infrastructure you've been encountering but it is also providing an unwelcome respite from friend-making. Maybe it would be too much hope for that is the cavern would be home to another potential new friend. Maybe leaving your big city behind was a horrible mistake. Just maybe, these dark, cold tunnels are completely devoid of Oh, hang on, there's a bunch of buildings in the distance. Oh, hello. I thought you were one of my girls, but you don't look like a jade blood or anything else, actually. How strange. You convey your usual spiel regarding your circumstances. You are lost and lonely, and your ribs are still broken, you think? Honestly, the ribs are fine. You could just use another friend or two. That, oh my god. I see. My first responsibility is to my jades and my mother grub, so I can't make any promises of friendship just yet. But you do look like you need someone to take care of you. Here is the brooding caverns. We follow a simple we follow a few simple rules. Were those V's supposed to represent the uh is it stalactites or stalagmites that are the ones coming from the ceiling? I don't know. One, don't invite drama from da from top down below. Two, protect the mother grub. Three, we have no hierarchy, but do what I say. Let's do everything we can to keep our current record of dozens of sweeps without any jades being culled. You're not sure what half of those words mean, but you nod your head. Good. I'll take you to our hive. Follow me. You follow her into her hive, which looks like a school of some kind of dormitory with multiple rooms, multiple floors. Usually, more of my jades are around. I suppose that everyone is out watching the Imperial drones arrive with file pail. Wait. Philia pails. Girls, we have a visitor to our cabins. Caverns. One, do not be alarmed by their bizarre appearance. They seem to be harmless and quite weak. Do not give them more injuries than they already have. Wait, two, do not give them more injuries than they already have. Our visitors deserve a warm jade blood welcome. She claps her hands, no one else is around, but you stand attention to give her the thumb up and to show that you read her loud and clear. You notice that she called you visitor, and not friend, but that's okay, you can do whatever it takes until you are upgraded from visitor to friend, or at least charity case. <laughs> you follow her upstairs and she stops at a big room on the second floor when you step into it. You have to clap your hands over your mouth to keep from gagging from the revolting sight. There are big, baby-sized larvae-looking things all over the floor, squirming around and crying and inchworming out of kiddie pools of green slime. What the hell? 
This is our nursery. Most of these wrigglers are sick or injured, so we look after them in here until they are well enough to go back to the caverns and spin their coons. She looks shifty, all of a sudden, giving you some wide eye, side eye, like she's sizing you up. You try to look very non-threatening and also 100% trustworthy. We keep these... We keep this nursery on the down low. It's not against any laws, but it's something of a break with tradition to save any of the grubs instead of just letting them die. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure why we do it. I guess it feels right to me to take care of them, the same way I take care of my jades. A nursery, huh? I don't know if that voice is going to work for her, but oh well. A nursery, huh? You look around again, and this new information, you guess you can sort of see how the wrigglers look like babies? You can't believe that one of these things could grow up to into anything that looks like Bronia, but this is an alien planet, so who knows? Did she even introduce herself? I don't remember her introducing herself. She takes you over to a shelf that seems to hold medical supplies. You're not sure what can be done for your broken ribs, but maybe she has some kind of alien technology that can help. But when she starts going through the cabinet, you don't see anything that looks high-tech like the thing that fixed your arm. Uh, I guess that most of what we have is stuff for the Wrigglers, and I am not familiar enough with your Rizara anima anatomy to know if it will help. But if you are not completely sure how to do something, it's best to try anyway. One, even if it fail, even if you fail, someone else can still learn from your mistake. Two, maybe you won't fail. You never know. You're not sure. You're not so sure about applying this ethos, ethos to your broken ribs, but she looks so determined. It might be rude to say no. I'm going to save, as always, for slot. Close menu. Go for it, my ribs are already broken, so what's it, where's harm? Thanks, but no thanks, I'll heal on my own just fine. There we go. Oh, well, if you are sure. I'm worried about you, though. You seem like you need help, and I wish I could help you more. If I can't take care of someone, I'm not sure how we can ever truly be friends. You try to cheer her up, pointing out that friendship is a two-way street after all. She doesn't have to concern herself with your mutil mutilated frame. How can you help her instead? Well, sure, there are things around here that I could use some assistance with. However, don't take this the wrong way, but we've only just met. I don't know that I can trust you to be as responsible as I am. It's not easy to be one in charge. You have to be one consensuous. Two, considerate, and three, competent, all at, at all times. You try to think of times in your life when you've been something considerate and competent. You're drawing a bit of a blank, but hey, new planet, new you, you assure her that you have what it takes. I guess you want to prove that you can be responsible. I can let you help me out today. It's a good time to visit the Mother Grub. You're careful to step around all the little guys on the floor as you head out of the nursery. She takes you back outside, and these caverns are even bigger than you first realized. They're also dark, and cold, and gloomy, and you can't see anywhere that might lead up to the planet's surface. Does she really live down here all the time? Yes. It is their job. <laughs> To make some conversation during this cold hike in the damp cave, you mentioned that living underground like this seems kind of depressing. You realize too late that this wasn't very tactful, but she doesn't get angry at your conversational gambit of insulting her home. Oh no, it is very peaceful down here. Well, in comparison to anywhere else. I quite enjoy it. The brooding caverns are a place for life and birth, not death. That's pretty uncommon on Alternia. You're still not sure what she means by brooding caverns, but you guess it has something to do with the Wrigglers in her nursery. Before you can ask, 
you reach the top of a ridge and get in view, wider view, of the rest of the cavern. It's enormous, probably the size of a small city. All over the cave floor, you see more wrigglers crawling everywhere. Cocoons line the cave walls, and the larger stalactites with some young trolls crawling out of them. Walking, flying, and crawling among the wrigglers and young trolls are a variety of white monsters of all kinds and shapes and sizes. In the center of the cabin is... You don't even know what, how to describe it. It looks kind of like a huge, many-legged queen bug of some kind, with a goat-shaped skull and horns coming out of the, her head. Her bulbous sphincter ripples as she lays a continuous stream of hundreds of eggs from which you assume the Grey Wrigglers will hatch. Gross. And marching through all of this, you see several hulking, bipedal creatures, each carrying two buckets, either to or away from the mother grub. They look armed, and they look like regimented troops, soldiers of some kind. You are instinctively terrified of them, because they're shaped like Dual Scar, one of the scariest trolls. This is where magic happens. And by that, I mean the continuation of our species. Jadebloods, like myself, are entrusted with looking after this process, which is of course a very special job. I don't know why I'm giving her a voice that sounds almost robotic, but I am. The Imperial Joins carry fi carry filia pills of genetic material to the mother grub for her slurry. She lays the egg. One, the Imperial drones carry filia pails of genetic material to the mother grub for her slurry. Two, she lays eggs that hatch new grub broods. Three, after the wrigglers emerge from their cocoons, the new trolls will go through the trials, and the ones that make it will be selected by Eleusis to care for them. For together the young trolls and their luci go up to the surface together, where the trolls will grow up, or get cold, or whatever. As Bronin explains the troll reproduction to you, one of the imperial drones veers sharply to the left, and in the process tramples over a few wrigglers and young trolls. The drones continue on, but several of the luci cry out, crowding around their dead or injured charges. One of them, a gigantic, a gigantic beast that resembles a bison, below, uh, bellows and rears up on its hind legs, hitting one of the other luci with its front hoof. Oh jeez, not again. This kind of damage control is a lot of what we have to deal with. Whenever a lucis goes rogue out of grief or confusion, there's the potential for it to lash out at other luci, the wrigglers, or the mother grub herself. Jadebloods cannot let that happen. She looks so concerned, a marked contrast to how confident she seemed before now. You offered to help her out earlier, and it seemed like now's your chance. Someone has to stop that rogue Lucis, and that someone could be you? Fight the monster, save the day. You've got this. Be a weenie. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna be a weenie. Time to go to Weenie Hut Juniors. Be a weenie. You definitely do not like the idea of wading into a monster fight, not even to save the progenitor of your new friend species. In fact, you don't like that Baronia is so focused on protecting all these helpless toddlers and distressed animals instead of taking care of you. Wow, I'm a little shit. You stammer out that you don't think that you can take any on any kind of monster right now. In fact, you just felt another stab of pain in your ribs. You might be blacking out. Bronya's concerned face turns in your direction as you start to swoon. She catches you before you hit the ground, and your heart flutters. You look up at her serious face, and she looks like such a mom, but also such a friend, like some sort of combination of these two concepts. Yikes. I don't it, you don't look so good. I can't leave you alone, not when you're in such bad shape. Hmm. Maybe I could carry you on my back while I try to stop the rampaging Lucis? 
Your heart flutters, turns into prick pinpricks of alarm. That sounds dangerous, mainly for you. Wow, I am such a bitch. You try to think of what you can say to dissuade her. Something other than, I think you should ignore the helpless babies and mother in danger behind you in favor of continuing to hold me in your strong arms. But before you can speak, you hear a commotion behind her. She turns to look over her shoulder, and her face sags with relief. Yes, the other jades are here. They should know what to do. We've taken care of crises like this before. Of course, usually I'm there to help. If you crane your neck, you can just glimpse a crowd of trolls corralling the rogue Lucis away from the mother grub, while the other trolls calm the remaining Luci and swoop up any wrigglers in harm's way. It looks like I needn't have worried. They are more than capable of stepping in while I'm otherwise occupied. I'm so proud. You take this opportunity to compliment her on what a good leader she must be to have trained the others so well. Super smooth. She beams at you and sets you down carefully on the cavern floor, kneeling at your side. This could have gone quite badly. I am glad I didn't take the wrong choice when I stayed to help you instead of rushing off. It just goes to show that sometimes the best thing you can do for the group is to take care of the weakest person in it. You kind of want to object to being called the weakest person, but you did just fake a fainting spell for attention, so maybe now isn't the best time. Instead, you thank her sincerely for sticking by your side. I hate this side of my character. <laughs> the two of you watch together as order is gradually restored to the chaos below, and even with your injuries, you feel close to content and quite hopeful about how this relationship is progressing. You notice at that at your side, several wrigglers are blindly squirming around, confused and crying. There are some young trolls here too, looking around, all lost in bereft. 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 You're not sure if their Lucy ran off with the others that got involved in the fracas, or if these little guys are orphans now. Now that you're seeing them out in the natural cavern light, the wrigglers look less like maggots to you. In fact, they're even kind of cute. You can see why Bronya would want to take care of them. One of the smallest wrigglers closest to you has somehow flipped himself over onto his back and seems unable to right himself his little legs waving in the air while he cries. Trying to be careful with your ribs, you reach out to scoop him up and cradle him in your, to your chest, rocking him back and forth until he cr his cries quiet down. Wow, you have a very strong nurturing instinct. I think he likes you. You almost look like you could be his Lucis, or a jade blood. You are pleased that she approves of your caretaking display. The wriggler's cough breaks you from your haze of smug satisfaction, and when you look down, you realize that he seems to have trouble breathing. You point this out to Bronya. Good observation. You really are unnatural to take care of other creatures, aren't you? Some people find that nurturing ability to be very attractive in potential friend. But as for this Wriggler, this is definitely not a good sign. I'm surprised none of these drones have noticed that he's sick. If we leave him here, he'll be cold for sure. Bronya takes the wriggler from you, and you're more than happy to hand him over considering that you have no idea what to do with a sick baby that's not your species. Also, your broken ribs make holding a baby kind of painful, and Bronya holds the wriggler carefully, but with perfect ease, just like you hope she'll cradle your new friendship in its infancy. Still hate myself. <laughs> Once Bronya feels assured that her jades have the situation at the brooding caverns under control, you both take the wriggler back to the jade blood nursery. You hover over, you hover around uselessly while Bronya sets up some kind of crib filled with green slime. You are a little concerned when she takes the wriggler and submerges him in the slime because, like, he was already having trouble breathing. Surely, drowning him in slime won't help. The soaper should help strengthen his bellow sacs and soothe his sorrow, sorrow shoot. When he gets healthy again, I'll take him back to the cavern and set him free to make his cocoon and pupate. But he's so small. It's unlikely that he'll survive the trials or be selected by Eleusis. 
You hate to see Bronya sad, and you try to be sympathetic mentioning your own astute observation that this whole system set up with the Wrigglers and the Trials and the cooling seem pretty brutal. What? Oh no, I would never suggest- This is just the way the world works. It, it's fine. It's, it's fine. The Trials are how young trolls prove that they're strong enough to survive. It's only right for the weak to be cold. It's the purpose of Jade Bloods to ensure the continuation of our species, and consequently, the Humo Spectrum. One, we are not revolutionaries. Two, we are not we are meant to do our jobs and keep our heads down and keep things running smoothly. I would never presume to question the basic three, I would never presume to question the basic tenets of Alternian society. That would bring negative attention from the high bloods, and I just want to keep my jade safe. You look around at the nursery and all these injured or underdeveloped burglars that Bronya was apparently supposed to let die. You think it might not be true that she doesn't question the way her world works. She's looking at you like she's scared you'll call her on it and expose her altruistic tendencies. You try to salvage this conversation thread. Did you say that the culling wrigglers sounded brutal? You meant neutral. Yes, you feel 100% neutral on this topic, neither committed to the culling side of things, nor the eager to take up arms and revolution. Ah, yes, neutral is how I feel about it as well. What a good word to describe exactly how I feel about this controversial political subjects. Did I mention that keeping this nursery technically isn't technically illegal? Because it isn't. Technically. There's no reason for any of the Treza's drones to come investigating our hive, and if any drones do come knocking, we have nothing to hide. No borderline revolutionary ideas will be tolerated within these walls. Bronya laughs nervously and looks around the room, like she's making sure that any Imperial drones hiding in here heard her announcement. You feel bad for how nervous she is. You didn't mean to freak her out. You tell her that she sounds super convincing, and why shouldn't she, because she's clearly telling the truth. If you were an Imperial drone, you would definitely be satisfied right now with her clearly law-abiding and neutral ways. Thank you. That means a lot. You cast about for something to change the sub subject and mention that your ribs are feeling a bit better. Bronin's face brightens, and she lifts your arm just gently so she can touch your injured part of your torso, examining it with her typically responsible and authoritative way. You shiver and wonder if her touch has healing properties. I'm glad to hear that. After all, I don't like it when my friends suffer. Your heart leaps. You look up, scarcely swallowing, wait, scarcely allowing yourself to hope. Could it be, or was she just making a general statement? If you're not in any more pain, hopefully that means your injuries will heal soon. I'll take care of you until then, my friend. You are overcome, your eyes filled with tears, Bronya smiles at you and squeezes your hand. Surprisingly, I got the win on the first try and the whole time I hate my character. But only for his inner, inner thoughts and a little bit of being a weenie, but I mean, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Self-care comes first. Oh, nice. We're gonna hop back in. That was the good end. We're gonna hop right back in. There actually might be multiple endings. Let's see. <laughs> there, I think, well, obviously there were multiple endings, but I don't know. There might be multiple bad endings. Well, I mean, there's multiple bad endings, but maybe there's a good, a second good ending somewhere. Um, go for it. My ribs are already broken, so there's no harm. Okay, come here. Lift your arm. Lift your shirt so I can get your injured bellow sack enclosures. Yes, like that. Turn a part that's all bloody horrifyingly towards me. She has something that looks kind of like ointment. It's the slight shade of bright green similar to the slime beds you see around the nursery, and it also seems to be glowing. Seems like there's nothing wrong about applying it to your skin. But despite your optimism, the second Bronya rubs some of it in on your broken skin, you feel a searing hot pain like you just got doused with poison. You flinch back instinctively. Your momentum carries you too far, 
as you step back and you trip on something behind your feet. You cartwheel your arms, but it's no use. You're going down. You're yelling timber. You're yelling timber. No. No, jeez. <laughs> You feel something soft and squishy break your fall, and you hear a terrible squelching noise and some kind of animal squeal. You have fallen right onto one of the wrigglers. You roll off of it, but there's no use. It's squished flat, and you're covered in olive fluid that you think might be its blood. You look up to see Bronia's horrified face, and know that there is no hope for a friendship in those vengeful eyes. You might want to run before I throw you out of this window and break the rest of your bones. Game over. Alternia's deadly deadliest ass. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, there's one more, then. I do know that one of these ones... Oh, no, that's not what I want. Okay, well, I... Okay. Let me... What did I choose? You offered to help her out earlier, seems like your chance, but okay, that's that's what I said before. I think that I- yeah, I didn't click the weenie. Um, <laughs> I didn't click the weenie <laughs> out of context. Okay. The bison lucis seems to be causing quite a ruckus. Other luci have now gotten riled up too, with some of them trying to gather wrigglers to keep them out of harm's way, and others just keep getting hyped to thrash. It seems like it could turn into a monster stampede, and they're close to the mother grub's big, soft, vulnerable abdomen. Not great! Fighting a monster single-handed seems like a daunting first step in a friendship, but you did tell her you could be responsible. You square up your shoulders and tell Bronya that she has nothing to worry about. You're going to stop that Lucis, calm down all the other Lucis, and protect the Mother Grub, all without breaking a sweat and hopefully without breaking any more bones either. Whoa there, I was going to suggest that I go after it while you stay here. You seem kind of weak and fragile, even apart from your injuries, I mean. I don't want you to get hurt worse, and I'm not sure I trust anyone other than myself to take the lead on this. That wasn't quite the reaction you were hoping for. Normally you would have all about sitting back and letting her protect you, because, well, protective and responsible is a good look on her. But desperate times call for desperate measures, and you don't know how else you're going to prove yourself worthy to be her friend. You do your best to project an air of confidence, or at least competence. You assure her that this is no sweat to you. You take down Raging Bison back home planet all the time. You're known for it, actually. Well, if you say that, this isn't your first un undulated roping gallop exhi ex exhibition, I'll believe you. I'll hang back to let you give it a shot. But if it gets too overwhelming in there, I'm right here. Caring for the mother grub is my responsibility as a jade blood. Wait, one. Two, I'd never abandon a friend to deal with a mess on their own. If we end up being friends, that is. Oh, hell yes. Now you have reason to hope. You approach the rampaging bison with caution. Do all bison have horns like that? Maybe they do. You're no bison expert, but you're pretty sure they don't have all that teeth that... They don't have all te they don't all have teeth that nasty. Bison on Earth mostly eat grass, don't they? This guy doesn't look like a herbivore. At first you try to calm the Lucis down by talking to it, but your soothing words have no effect. In fact, you might have just made it even angrier by suggesting that it pause and take some deep breaths in reaction to its trampled charge. You're not even sure you can. it can understand human speech, come to think of it. You circle around it, wishing that you could. you had some kind of lasso or something. Maybe you can herd it away from the grub. You look around to see if there are any of these Lucy look vaguely like Earth Shepherd dogs, but no dice. You hesitate too long, and the Lucis turns away, its furious eyes falling on the Mother Grub. It tramples. it stamps its hooves snorts air out of its nostrils and screams in a way that sounds a lot more hellish than you imagine normal bisons are capable of. 
It's obviously about to charge, and you can only think of one thing to do. In a desperation, you leap forward and tackle it football style, doing everything you can with your flimsy human body to drag it onto its side. It half works, you plow into the Lucis and stop it in its tracks, but it topples over onto a nest of Wrigglers taking you down with it. Oh no. Wrigglers and young trolls go bouncing everywhere, squealing in distress, and their Luci descend upon you in rage. Everything is chaos for a whole while. You're trapped beneath a bison lucis, which is very worrying for all your body parts, and you think you might feel something important rupturing inside of you. But hey, on the bright side, this crushing mass is protecting you from all the other pissed off luci trying to attack you. Just as your whole breathing situation is starting to get dicey, you hear a commotion that, in what sounds possibly like the trailsing of some of the smaller luci that were trying to get to you. The crowd of beasts around you scatters, and then you hear her. Oof, I'm having a hard time getting this thing off of you, and he's still very angry. He keeps trying to kick me. Where's a bronze blood when you need one? You don't know what that means, but you're very grateful that she's here to help you. You try to communicate this, but it comes out garbled from all the blood in your mouth. Maybe don't try to speak, or move, or help. You experience a sinking feeling that could be related to your diminishing odds of impressing Branya and becoming her friend, or it could be the compression of all your internal organs. Either way, it's tough to feel optimistic right now. But before you can give in to complete despair, you hear other voices. Your view is blocked, but by the mass of bison flesh on top of you, but could it be? Are these other people here to save you? Finally, I was wondering where you all had gotten off to. Let's all work together, girls. One, you two grab his horns to keep his head still and keep it from biting anyone. Two, the rest of you come around, come around with me to its backside so we can push it without getting kicked. You hear some grunting and muttering, and the bison starts making noises that sound more confused and less furious. The pressure and pain on your chest briefly spike in, intensely, as the thing's weight shifts, and then they must succeed in dragging it off of you, because suddenly you can breathe again. But the crisis is not over yet. While you're still testing the use of your lungs and blinking up at the cavern ceiling, you hear a new cacophony of enraged monster noises. Uh-oh, the other Lucy are still agitated. Get down there and try to calm them down. Protect the mother grub. You try to lift yourself to see what's going on, but putting any weight on your arms makes you feel like maybe all of your bones got turned into confetti. Painful, painful confetti. You feel strong hands propping you up gently, and now your head is in Bronya's lap. You try to focus more on how this is a nice place for your head to be, and less on the pain. This is not good. I don't know if my jades can reach the stampede in time, and the mother grud could get injured. Not to mention all these wrigglers in danger. Oh no. You didn't think this situation could get any worse, but now you see that the several of Imperial drones that had been about to leave the caverns are turning back, drawn by all the noise and chaos. But maybe this could be a good thing? Maybe they can instill some order? Fuck, they're going to kill everyone! She scrambles to her feet in the process, letting your head whack down on the cave floor. Your vision swims, but you can still make out the drones firing indiscriminately at the Lucis, the Luci, at the Grubs, and Wrigglers, and at the Jade Bloods. One laser beam skims the side of the Mother Grub's massive midsection, and her scream is so loud that the ceiling shakes, and a few stalactites shake loose, falling on drones and Luci and Wrigglers alike. It's a total catastrophe, a whole rainbow's worth of troll. Wriggler and Lucis blood is splattering the, ca ca the cavern walls. I can't speak today. Bronya seems paralyzed by the chaos, looking from her jades to the mother grub to the imperiled... The, to the imperiled Wrigglers, like she's not sure who to help first. I can't believe it. 
This is the worst disaster we've had down here. And all because I thought I could sit back and let someone else be responsible for once. If I were less a secure person, I could have let this moment plant a seed of self-doubt in my mind about my ability to take care of others and do my job well. Or I could chalk it up to you being really fucking stupid. You shrink under the weight of her glare. She's green in the face from how angry she is. You swallow and manage to spit out enough blood to ask a question that you already know is hopeless. Does this mean you can't be friends? Are you serious right now? I do not make friends with anyone who recklessly endangers the trolls and wrigglers under my care. You killed them all. Game over. Welp. We screwed up. <laughs> At least we already got the good ending. So. Thank you all for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Comment down below who your favorite character is so far. Personally, Skyla is my favorite. And that's not just because I like doing her voice. <laughs> Keep gaming.